So a lot of you 3080 and 3090 owners probably know that the VRAM or video RAM gets astronomically hot. We're talking 110 degrees Celsius. That's about 230 Fahrenheit, at which point the card starts throttling back to prevent long-term damage, which is going to decrease your performance, whether that's frames per second in game or your hash rate while you're mining. Now, about a week or so ago, I made my first attempt at changing the thermal pads on my 3080 card. I do have a Dell Alienware R11 back there, which basically uses a Dell in-house card that has a custom PCB, a heat spreader, some heat fins, and two fans on the bottom, but it's pretty similar to the FE cards, and the FE cards are notorious for getting high temps, but these other third-party cards like MSI and EBGA, they're not really safe from these temps either. My first attempt wasn't great, and I saw virtually no difference in temperature whatsoever. However, I read some of the comments from the awesome community that we built up here at Gamer Heaven, and I got some really good information, went back to the drawing board, disassembled this card again, and I got the results that I wanted, boys. All right, so during the intro, I alluded to the fact that I got the results that I wanted. Now, what exactly does that mean? We are talking a 30 Celsius drop in VRAM temperatures from uh, 120, which is the throttle limit while I was mining, down to 90 consistently. I'm mining for several hours a day, generally between 14 and 16 hours a day when I'm not using my PC to stream, video edit, or just general usage where I need my GPU, which took my hash rate from the mid 80s, low 90s, to the high 90s, low 100s consistently. And also certain AAA titles that really use a lot of the VRAM, for example, Cyberpunk 2077, is literally not boosting my temperatures at all now, which, means I'm not dropping any frames while streaming or encoding videos. So the disassembly footage of me taking apart the 3080 is recycled or reused from the initial video where I did my first pad install. So if you've already seen that video, there is timestamps in the description below. You can go ahead and skip past that. But if this is the first video that you've encountered with somebody going through this process, you're gonna wanna watch that, especially if you are an Alienware R10, R11, or R12 owner, as we do all have the same 3080 and 3090 style cards. Just follow along. And at the end of the video, I wanna give some tips, tricks, and pointers that I've picked up from my community, as well as a uh, ton of forums, Reddit forums, NVIDIA's customer support forums, and then also just lessons learned from my experience doing this. Let's get it. Alrighty guys, I have the Alienware R11 unplugged from the wall. I have two uh, distinct bundles here that are zip tied together, or not zip tied, they're Velcro wrapped together. I have all my USB and power cables here, and then my three displays here for the 40-inch uh, TV, my primary gaming monitor, and my secondary stream slash, you know, Ethereum mining monitor or whatnot. So getting the case apart is actually quite simple. I'm gonna go ahead and reposition you guys a little bit closer. So if you, have, if you have an Alienware R10 or R11, they have virtually the same case or chassis as Dell slash Alienware likes to call it. So you're gonna remove this Phillips head screw right here. And one of the things I do like about this is how easy it is to pop off the side panel and get access to the components. Uh, being somebody that generally builds custom PCs and got a pre-built, I was a little concerned about, and then you're gonna pop both of these up into the unlock position. Pull this out, side panel pops off like that. She's a heavy girl. For being a uh, smaller than a regular mid ATX tower, but larger than a small form factor PC, it's kind of an in-between because of the wedge shape. It's actually quite a bit more compact than a regular uh, mid tower case. It just pops off like that. Make sure when you put it in, you start from the bottom at an angle like that. And then make sure that these top um, tabs are lined up and you pull this out while you snap in the top. I know it sounds like a lot of steps, but once you've done it a couple times, it is super duper easy. And then you are able to swivel out your PSU or power supply unit. Now, before you do that, I would unplug, I would uh, unplug this data cable that goes to your uh, mechanical hard drive. If you do have a mechanical hard drive up here, which spoiler alert, we're not going to for very long because I got some additional fans. We are going to replace the front intake fan and add a second 120 millimeter intake fan right here as well. So there will be no hard drive here. This is gonna get relocated down here to one of these vacant trays at the bottom here. But you wanna unplug this because when you swivel out the PSU or power supply unit, uh, this is gonna bend and it's just gonna pop it off. But if it doesn't pop it off, you might actually bend or damage that cable and you do not want to do that. So. I do like the design with the swivel mechanism here. As you can see, there's the 3080 in there. She is warm because I just got home from work and she, of course, is mining Ethereum while I'm not while I'm uh, not using my PC to game, stream, or 4K video edit for the channel. All right, so on my particular PC, I have a 10th generation i7 in here. Uh, it is overclocked to five gigahertz. I've had no cooling issues whatsoever at uh, idle. It's at about eh, 40 degrees Celsius and under load. She's generally at about 65. 
uh, to 70. Under extreme load, if I'm doing uh, rendering a 4K video or I'm doing a benchmark, it'll get up to the 85 range, which I know is a little bit warm, but it's not near that critical 90 Celsius range, and it's only for a very short burst while doing a very intensive benchmark. If I'm AAA, if I'm gaming a AAA title or streaming, it never gets uh, out of the 60 range, which is good. I do have two sticks, two 8 gigabyte sticks of HyperX RAM in there. We are going to order two more as there is uh, four slots here and only two of them are occupied, two are vacant. And then of course you have the Dell slash Alienware uh, 3080, which is basically uh, more or less, it is a Founders Edition card. However, they put this kind of heat sink or heat block on here, some cooling fins on the side, and then two fans on the bottom and some LED um, GeForce RTX illuminated lights here. They can't change color or anything. They're just illuminated white. Not that it even matters on this PC because you do have a full uh, cover on the side, a side panel. You don't have tempered glass or anything to really show it off. To remove the GPU, the first thing you're gonna do is remove the two power, two power cables right here. There is a small prong on the bottom that you need to depress while you are removing it. And uh, they pop right out like that. You might have to give them a little wiggle. They are a little bit finicky the first time that you remove them, but nothing too crazy. Then you're gonna go ahead and remove the support beam right here. I don't really like the support bracket because you kind of have to bend the card up on the motherboard in order to get it out. You just, well, that was pretty easy, but sometimes you actually have to uh, pry it out a little bit. And this thing is uh, rubberized in there to keep down vibration and also to, you know, not damage uh, the card with a plastic to plastic or plastic to metal connection. So that is very nice. Right there are my index fingers it is. You're gonna push that. And that is going to detach the card from the motherboard, from the PCI slot, and then you're just going to wiggle it out. There we go. Come on there, big girl. Oh my god, what is this? What is this, Dell? What is this? They left some plastic wrap on the graphics card. Jesus Christ. Well, there's your 3080 graphics card. This is probably a good time for me to take a picture for my thumbnail, right? All right, this is a great opportunity to get a look at the guts of the internals of an R10 or R11. Here's your motherboard here. It is blue, branded with some Aurora and Dell markings and whatnot. This is the boot drive, the NVMe SSD. I do have a second NVMe SSD that's on an adapter right here that I did install on this channel, as there is only one slot on the MOBO for an NVMe SSD. And well, I had a second one sitting around, a one terabyte. So you have your CPU cooler here, which is water cooled, obviously. You have your two hoses. You have your 120 millimeter exhaust fan up there. You have this heat sink here, which isn't on some of the lower spec models. And if it is not, you can buy this from Alienware or Dell for $4, or you can find it on Amazon as well. And I strongly, strongly recommend installing this. It takes three minutes, $4, and does dissipate a lot of heat off of the motherboard. That one and that one right there as well. Then you have your PCI slot. This is where the graphics card is going to sit, obviously. As you see, there are two cutouts in the back for all of your video ports for your 3080 graphics card or whatever graphics card you have. There's only a single intake fan, 120 millimeter. Like I said, we are gonna be relocating that hard drive to the bottom down there and putting in a 120 millimeter fan. And other than that, dropping in two more sticks of RAM, and that's probably gonna be it customization, modification, or upgrade wise for the R11. All right, so we're gonna start by taking this back plate off of the 3080. Now, depending on what model you have, the screw orientation and the layout might look a little bit different. So what I advise you do, since I'm video recording, I can just basically come back to this video and see how everything looks. However, take a picture with your phone or draw a, take a piece of paper and draw out a little diagram with where all the screws are and that way you kind of know where everything goes back in place. These four screws here are uh, spring screws, so basically you have to unscrew them in a zigzag pattern, similar to putting a car wheel and tire on. You want to go in a star pattern because they basically divide the pressure amongst them. All right, so you want to make sure that screw stays on, or that spring stays on the screw like that, and again, like I said, when uh, uninstalling and installing these screws, you want to go in kind of a uh, zigzag pattern, a little crisscross applesauce, so to speak. Now, if you're worried about static shock to your card, you can wear a static bracelet. I actually do have one in my uh, drawer, but I just, I never really wear one. I built several PCs and I've never had an issue. What you can do, and I do recommend, is touching some bare metal, like on your case, for example, before you start touching your silicon parts, your printed circuit board, stuff like that. Um, but like I said, that's all I've ever really done is touch the little bare metal first, and I've never had any issues yet, so. Fingers crossed, knock on wood. Oh, that's why they're difficult to get out. These do have blue Loctite on them. 
So you might have to use a little muscle to break them free, especially with a small slick screwdriver like this. All right, so I have all the screws separated from left to right as they are all different screws. The four on the outside are the same, uh, just about, yeah, just about the same. And then these two right, these four right here are the same. Then these four right here are the same. And then this one is special in its own. So I have all those separated from left to right. And I'm gonna keep the graphics card kind of oriented with this um, back tab to the front left. So that way I'll kind of be able to remember where everything is. So those are some of the thermal pads that we're gonna be replacing, but that's not it. We need to take off the remainder of this. We do need to take apart the remainder of this GPU. So we're gonna remove these two screws right here. These are also spring screws. There are some um, cords in here, some cables that you need to unplug. Actually, you technically don't need to unplug them. You can kind of just set it like that. All right, so we are going to install some thermal pads double stacked around the outside of this heat pipe uh, core here or center. Now I did order four of these. I'm gonna return any of the ones that I don't use. Um, so obviously I'll try not to open any more packages than I need to, but these are very, very small. The, uh, actual landing page on Amazon does not do justice to how tiny these are. That's why I did order four of them because in the community, I read exactly how tiny they are. In fact, this box is not nearly what's inside. Uh, that is all you get right there. So very, very small thermal pads without a doubt. All right, recycled footage is over and we are back to current time. The thermal paste and pads I'm using are gonna be linked in the description below. They're these syringe styles. They are kind of reusable. So if you don't use the entire syringe at once, you can put the cap back on. All right, so I got my 3080 apart again. I'm gonna go ahead and take some isopropyl alcohol, wipe off all this thermal paste on here. And I'm going to remove these stickers right here on this heat plate that leads to the heat pipes and the cooling fins. And I'm going to apply a uh, thermal paste there as I've read on these cards, the Dell Alienware cards, this area here gets very hot and obviously there's no thermal paste. Uh, if you do put thermal pads, which I did try doing as a subscriber, a viewer, a follower, told me that he did that. I tried that, it is too thick and it will not get a good seal on there and it actually caused the card to get really hot really quick. So I'm gonna put thermal paste in there instead as I've read that as uh, the play there, which as you can see is clearly making uh, contact with the memory, which is good. So unfortunately the next clip did get corrupted, but you didn't really miss too much. It was only like a 45 second clip. Basically I use isopropyl alcohol. It is a 70% pure alcohol and 30% most likely distilled water. You're gonna wipe off all the existing thermal paste, replace it all with new thermal paste. The exact one that I use is linked in the description below. It seems to be working pretty damn good as I did drop my temperatures 30 degrees Celsius. And you wanna make sure you remove the stickers, those white uh, those white serial number stickers on the heat pipe area, because obviously you're not gonna be making proper contact uh, between the metal and the thermal paste if you have a plastic sticker on there. So remove that. You're gonna apply the thermal paste and you wanna apply it quite generously. Go rather thick on it. Don't just put like a little dime size. I literally spread it out pretty thick, pretty damn thick to get good coverage over the entire um, slab of metal, I guess you could say. Probably a better way to verbal, probably a better way to word that, probably a more technical PC term, but the old slibbity slab of metal, just slather it up. All right, guys, so over here at the PCAM mining right now, I wanted to serve you guys a little bit of proof pudding just to make sure that I'm not talking out of my tuchus or, you know, shoving things up your rumpkin or anything like that. I am currently at 99.85 mega hash. It'll dip down to about 96. It'll go up to about 102. Uh, but generally, I'm right around 98 to 99 mega hash consistently. The highest my VRAM temps now will get ever, ever, ever is about 96 degrees Celsius. However, generally, they are at either 90 flat, 92, or 94. My core temperature is usually uh, between 54 and 60 degrees Celsius. And then obviously load and fan speed, those pretty much stay uh, 99 to 100%. So what I've learned from this whole experience is that on these particular cards, I don't think the pads make that big of a difference. It's the thermal paste. By applying thermal paste around that metal heat sink on the back of the card where the fans pinch together with the uh, heat pipe and heat spreader area, by applying thermal paste around there where it's metal to metal contact and has zero thermal pads, uh, th thermal paste. And originally I had tried using thermal pads. They're too thick. Even if you're using a 0.5 millimeter pad, it's too thick. You wanna use paste. So you're still getting a good metal to metal connection and it'll be able to dissipate that heat. If you use pads, you're actually going to make your temperatures worse. I actually had to retake my card apart uh, the first time that I popped it in the chassis because it was, uh, the temps were actually higher. So you don't wanna do that. 
Thermal paste, though, the exact thermal paste that I used is linked down there in the description below. I don't know why I drew a little picture for you guys. It's just right down there. Uh, as well as the thermal pads that I did use to change the stock pad location. As well as the thermal pads that I did use to change the stock thermal pads in their default location. Now, I didn't add any further thermal pads to any areas that were not covered by the four strips that were there from factory on these cards. Uh, but I think the pace, like I said, is what made that huge, like, 30 degrees Celsius difference. Now, don't get me wrong, I would still recommend changing the pads while you do the paste. You already have the card disassembled, you might as well do all these mods at once, as it is a rather involved install, having to take apart your GPU and whatnot. The next one is you want to make sure that your pads are actually high enough to make contact between the memory and that metal heat plate, which is a heat spreader on top. So, for me, I'm running a, a one millimeter of pads, that is two... 0.5 millimeter pads stacked on top of each other and as you can see when I took them apart You could see indentations where the memory is actually pressing into the pads So it is making contact and it is dissipating that heat and then finally if you are going to be mining I recommend running some undervolt and overclock settings I do have a video linked in the description below as well with my personal settings that I'm using to get these results However, if you are using nice hash quick miner, which is what I'm using I actually don't use those manual overclock, undervolt overclock settings anymore. Um, I leave it on the card stock clock, and then I put the in-house, in-application uh, quick miner overclock setting to either medium or high. Generally, I keep it on high, and they do a really good job of optimizing it to where I'm getting a consistent 90 degrees Celsius on the VRAM, 60 degrees Celsius on the uh, actual core clock of the GPU, not core clock, on the actual core temp of the GPU, and my mining hash rate is at the high 90s to low 100s consistently. So that's kind of what I would recommend doing. It's what I'm doing and it's having great results. Just play around with it as, you know, Silicon Lottery, everyone's cards are a little bit different. And I'm just really glad that it made this substantial of a difference as it really isn't very expensive or difficult to do this. It's a little bit nerve wracking taking apart your GPU, your brand new 3080, which are like super hard to come by right now. If you guys do have any questions, drop them in the comment section of this video. If I don't get around to answering your question, I guarantee you a fellow R10, 11 or 12 owner will answer your question down there. The community is extremely active on this channel and they're very, very helpful. You will get a ton of super good information from these guys and girls, stallions and stallionettes. If you enjoyed this video, added a little bit of value to your day and was beneficial, liking it helps it to get seen by more people, which in turn helps me grow my channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I do a lot of news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing. See you guys in the next one. Peace.